Is there any route more feared than the fade route? Probably not. Today, I'm gonna give you a guide to defending yourself against a fade on DB Tip Clips. Ah yes, the fade pattern is the most feared route in the receiver's route tree. For those of you new to playing football or defensive back, it's the pattern executed when a wide receiver lines up wide, often near the sideline, and runs a straight route towards the end zone. The quarterback usually throws a high arcing pass, but nowadays they can throw it to the back shoulder and the receiver can make a play on the ball. This play is especially effective when a receiver has either a size or a speed advantage over the cornerback. How do we stop that? I'm gonna give you some ways today. Number one, understanding the situation. Successful defense starts with situational awareness. Recognize the down and distance as well as the field position. In the red zone, the likelihood of a fade pattern increases, so defensive backs should be prepared to adjust their technique accordingly. Aligning according to your help increases your chances of successfully defending the route. If you have help inside, making a solid effort to keep your outside leverage could help you change the shape of the pattern and move the receiver closer to the sideline. Being aware that there is no help versus a pattern can allow you to to adjust your alignment and technique to play inside out and most likely play the hands versus the route if you end up in that situation. Number two, get a physical jam at the line. Jamming the receiver at the line of scrimmage disrupts the timing of the fade. By applying pressure and redirecting the receiver's release, the defensive back can throw off the intended path and buy time for teammates to provide support. Fade pattern is typically a pattern that requires a quarterback to release the ball quickly. If the timing's disrupted, it can lead to the quarterback holding the ball longer or making a throw that is off timing it. That's what we need. Also, you can reduce the space of the place that the ball can be led to when you get a good jam. So we have them run out of room and they can't fit it in. Number three, attach to the hip. Once the receiver releases, maintain close proximity and mirror their movements. Effective footwork is key in staying in the receiver's hip, denying separation and preventing an easy catch. The goal is to stay in a position where you can contest the catch point. Remember, the ball typically comes out quick. After disrupting the release, getting to the receiver's hip and crowding his space is key. When the ball arrives, it's best to be up against the receiver's body in an effort to be able to reach a throw placed anywhere on the receiver's body. Number four, timing the jump. As the pass is released, focus on the receiver's eyes and his hands. When the receiver begins to extend their arms to make the catch, it's time for the defensive back to time their jump. Jumping at the right moment increases the chances of disrupting the receiver's ability to make a clean catch. This is often overlooked point and it leads to a lot of catches that shouldn't be. Many times you'll see the defensive back jump early and be on his way down as the ball arrives. This allows the receiver to go up and over the defender for what we know as getting preyed on and it's an easy catch when that happens. Other times a DB will jump too late which also results in an easy catch for the receiver. So neither one of those things are good and you're going to want to avoid that. Number five, locating the ball. Locating the ball while maintaining tight coverage is essential. Turn your head at the right time to locate the flight of the ball. While doing so, maintain contact with the receiver and be prepared to adjust your body positioning to make a play on the ball. This key element is where a lot of defensive backs go wrong. Know what type of quarterback you're playing against. If you're playing against the type that throws the line drives on the fade, then turn around early because the throw will be low. If the quarterback is an air under the ball type of guy, then maybe you look later in the route or be prepared to play the hands as the receiver bends towards the sidelines for the ball. And I think you guys know what kind of ball I'm talking about. High pointing the ball. When making a play on the ball, aim to high point it. I'm sure you've had defensive back coaches that have told you this. High point the ball means reach for the ball at its highest point to minimize the receiver's ability to make a clean catch. Timing and leaping ability are crucial for achieving this technique successfully. Some defensive backs will try to defend an underthrown ball by just running. This should be avoided. Do yourself a favor and leave earth to go get the football. For starters, it may block the vision of the receiver. Second, he will likely jump and there's a chance that he'll reach over you. That can be a particularly embarrassing situation if you fail to get up, but he does. Always seek to high point the football and catch it away 
from your body. Beat the receiver to the football. And that's it. Follow those simple guidelines and you're going to put yourself in a really good position to defend that dreaded fade pattern. A lot of it has to do with your IQ and being able to anticipate when it comes. On top of that, good work at the line of scrimmage and having proper body position will put you where you need to be as that pass is coming in and you'll find that it's not so hard and you don't have to fear it quite as much. Do you fear the fade pattern? Let me know in the comments section. What is the pass route that you fear the most? Is it the fade? Is it the post? Or is it some other pattern that really just drives you absolutely crazy? Hey, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like. Definitely share it. And if this is your first time in the channel or you haven't had a chance to do it already, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified the next time I put out a great DB video like this one. In addition, if you're trying to up your game to its top level, you have to join the All Eyes DB Camp members area. I have over 200 videos in there showing you all types of things on technique, coverages, analyzing and breaking down technique, giving you drills, everything that you need to be an elite DB. And if you really, really want to reach the top of your game, every defensive back should own a copy of this book right here, 101 DB Tips. It has a ton of information in there on playing corner, playing slot, playing safety, how to train, how to watch film. Every defensive back and defensive back coach should have a copy of 101 DB Tips. I've got it available to you in a soft cover version or even an ebook so you can take it with you on the go. I'll have links to that down in the description as well. So all of the resources that you need to be the top defensive back that you can be is available right here as well as in the description down below so don't miss out on those things. Other than that, I appreciate you guys dropping in and taking this video in. Make sure you grab some great information out of it and share it with your friends. Appreciate you guys checking in. And as always, All Eyes DB Camp, consistency breeds results.